Marshall completed his studies and starts a new job. He earns a monthly salary of 14935 He needs to buy a vehicle. He would like to buy a small second-hand vehicle from ABS dealership that offers finance. He is interested in the Hyundai 2013, is available for 79000 cash. He can buy the car on credit, where he will pay a deposit of 10000 and 60 monthly installments of that. This amount does not include insurance. Okay, so let's quickly summarize what we have here. We've got a person called Marshall who's just finished studying and wants to buy a car. When you buy a car, there are two ways you can buy a car. You can either pay cash, where you pay for the full car in one price, or you can finance the car, which is what most people do uh, because it's just a bit easier on the pocket. Um, and this is where you will pay it off over time. Okay, but with this option, you will end up spending more because of things like interest and things like that that the bank adds. But if you pay for it cash, then you literally just pay the cash amount. Now, this question says, what is the total amount that Marshall will pay if he decides to buy it on credit or on finance? Okay, so he's going to pay a deposit. A deposit is an amount that you pay on the same day that you buy the car. So you're going to pay 10,000 Rand plus... Then they say he's going to make 60 monthly payments of 1,985. So 1,985, 60 times. And if you go work this out, it must be more than 79,000. Otherwise, something is gone wrong. Ooh, 129,000. Now, this is how it actually works in real life. You end up paying a lot more than if you just pay it cash. But not everyone has 79,000 rand just sitting there to pay for a car. So for some people it is, or for most people, it is better to just pay 1985 per month because everyone gets paid monthly, so it makes sense, but you do end up spending more over time, so you must understand that. Marshall claims that he could save more than 40,000 Rand if he buys the car cash, compared with on credit. Evaluate his statement by means of calculations. Well, if we simply minus these two numbers, let's see what happens. If we say, one, two, nine, 100 minus 79,000, we end up with 50,100 Rand. So Marshall said that he could save more than 40,000 Rand. He actually saves 50,000 Rand. So yes, statement is valid. Statement is valid. This question for six marks says, a loan is available from a loan offer is available from Trust Bank. Okay, so this is a different type of financing compared to this one over here. There's a new bank that says, "Hey, we'll give him a different offer. We'll give him ninety thousand rand at an interest rate of ten percent per annum, compounded quarterly. The maximum period of the loan is going to be thirty-six months." It says that Marshall decides to take the loan over a period of two years. Determine how much he would repay after nine months. So all that we'll do is we will take, okay, so it's a 90,000 Rand loan. So we'll just say 90,000. Now, they're using 10% per year. Remember, that means per year. But they're compounding quarterly. Ah. So what we will do is we will, okay, so let's just say 90,000. Then the, the quarterly interest rate, quarterly interest rate will be, so it's 10% per year, but there are four quarters in a year. So we divide that by four, and that will give us 2.5%. So that is the quarterly interest rate. Now think about quarters. In one year, there are four quarters, so that means every three months. So every three, six, nine, twelve. That's why there are four quarters in a year. Because it's every three months for twelve months. Three, six, nine, twelve. So a quarter is every three months. So what we will do is we will take the 90,000 Rand and we will, we will grow it. We will let the loan grow using the quarterly interest rate for three quarters. Because it's every, a quarter is every three months, but they want us to go all the way to nine months. So we're going to take the 90,000 and we're going to let it grow using this percentage three times. Okay, so we're going to go 
because it's compound. So we're going to go 90,000 multiply by 2.5%, and that'll give us. You could also say 2.5 multiplied by 90,000. That'll give us 2,250 Rand. So after one quarter, which is after three months, we will, it will, the loan will be worth 92,250 Rand. Okay, now we're going to take that amount because it's compound interest and we're going to get times that by 2.5% and that'll give us 2306.25. So we will now add that, we'll add that and that together. So 92250 plus 2306.25 and that'll give 94. 556.25. So that'll be after two quarters, which is six months. So now we have to do it once more. So we're going to go 2.5% of 94556 0.25, and that'll give us 2,363 Rand and 91 cents. So now we will add those two. And if you add those two numbers together, so I'm running out of space here, let's say um, 94556.25 plus 2363.91, that'll give us 96920. Okay, let me write this a bit better for you guys. Um, let me write it here. Nine six nine two zero oh, point one nine rand. So that is that question over there complete. This question says that Marshall is considering buying a new vehicle in a few years. He needs to take inflation into consideration. The expected inflation rate for the next three years is as follows: two thousand and twenty four, two thousand and twenty five, and two thousand and twenty six. A new Hyundai is currently priced at 139800 Determine how the 2023 price will change over the next two years and whether it would be wise for him to wait. Okay, so pretty much this question says, we have a brand new Hyundai that is currently worth 139800 This one over here was a second-hand one, okay? Um, that was a, and that was an old 2013. We're looking at a 2023, and that is currently worth 139,800. But we know that because of something called inflation, the prices of things usually go up. Like if you want to buy a brand new Hyundai in 2023, or if you buy it in 2024 or in 2025, it'll be more expensive in 2025 when you want to buy the brand new Hyundai. So what we'll do is we'll take this amount over here, and we will increase it by that percentage to see what it will be worth in 2024 and then we'll take that amount and increase it by that percentage to see what it will be worth in two years in 2025. We're not going to go to 2026 because that's three years away. So we're going to say 139,800. Well, let's first do the percentage. So you could say 1.25% of 139,800. And that'll be 1,747.50. So that is how much the Hyundai will go up in the year 2024. So what will it be worth? It will be then be worth 139,800 plus 1747.50. And so it'll be worth 141.50. 0 0.50. Okay, that's in, that's at the end of 2024. Now we're going to see what it will be worth in 2025. So we're going to take that number now, 141547. Some learners often, they would ask, can you add these two numbers together and just use that number? Nope, you have to go one step at a time. That's the way compound works. Um, it won't work the other way. And so we're going to take 0.5% of that number. And if we do that, that'll give us 7 hundred and seven rand and seventy four cents so we're going to add that to this and this amount over here now 
And so we're going to say 141547.50 plus 707.74. And that'll give us 142255.24. And so that is what the car will be worth in two years. So that is what the car is worth in 2023. That is what it will be worth in 2025. I think it would be good for him. I looked on the memo. You can say yes or no. Um, I think it will be good for him to wait. It will be good to wait. Two years will give him time to save up money and the car price will not increase much. We can see that it only went from 139, 800 to there. So it only went up by like 2,500 Rand in two years. That's not too bad. If you said that it won't be good, you could say it won't be good for him to wait because the price is going to the price is, we could say the price is increasing, so there will be more interest or something like that.